Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to show you how to add Netlify functions to your SvelteKit applications. Uh, some time ago I was building a Shopify e-commerce application with SvelteKit and I wanted to use Netlify functions and I couldn't do it. I don't really remember why, but I'm sure that somehow along the way I wasn't I was unable to to uh, use Netlify functions inside of my SvelteKit application. Uh, but the good news is. I figured out how to do it and now I want to show you how to also use Netlify functions in your own SvelteKit applications. Let's dive in. Okay, so this is the SvelteKit documentation and I'm sure if we go to getting started, we should see all the instructions on how to um, start up a new SvelteKit application. So I'm just going to do that and do npm in it. Felt at uh, next, and I'm going to call it uh, Svelte Kit. Svelte Kit, what now? Let's do Netlify functions. Functions, all right. Install that. Uh, do the skeleton project, no TypeScript, no ESLint no prettier and we're good so now i can change into my spelt kit netlify functions folder and open that up in in vs code all right uh so if i run this spelt kit app what's the command to run in oh my god i'm putting so many things in view here Let's get this out of the way. Actually, I can close this up entirely and just use the integrated terminal. And pull that up. The command to run it is npm run dev. So let's do npm run dev. Oh, no, no. I, ha I have to install first. Clear this and do npm install, I think. Yeah, definitely npm install before you run the development server. Okay, now that that is done, I think we can run the development server. Localhost 3000. I think it is running now. So let's do localhost 3000 and welcome to SvelteKit. Good. So our application is running as expected. What I want to do now is go ahead and show you how to add Netlify functions to this small Svelte Kit application. So the first thing I want to do is install the Netlify Svelte Kit adapter. I'll use PNP to install the adapter, but you can also do like yarn add, right? Oh, sorry, yarn add like this, but I'm going to go ahead and just paste in the installation using PNP and install it as a development event dependency, as a dev dependency. So while that is going on, I'm going to go ahead and create uh, a netlify.tomo file, which is where I will put all my netlify configurations. .tomo. All right, and what we need to put inside this file is just the configurations that will tell Netlify how to treat this project. Wait, I'm not sure this is installing correctly. Hang on. Oh, I, my God, I didn't stop this uh, from running. So I'll just paste this again and click on that. Yeah, now it's working. All right, in our Tomo file, let's uh, do the build. To see the command to run when you're building this site for production should be npm run build right and then the publish directory should also be build all right while we are in development mode the command to run should be Kit. No. 
I think it's failed dash kit and then dev. It's probably that one. I'll check the package.json file just to be sure. And what is, where is the script? Yes, it's this one. So I, that's correct. All right. Uh, then I want to specify where I want my function functions to be. Functions. What am I doing? Okay. And then I'll specify a directory for the functions. So I'll just say, uh, let's put it in Netlify slash functions. This is not this is not optional. This is where you should be putting your your Netlify functions in. Well, in any in any project that you want to add Netlify functions to, uh, it's required to put it in a Netlify slash functions folder. Then I'll select uh, a node, a bundler, and I'll set it to use ES build because of the performance benefits of uh, building functions with ES build. It, it it runs way faster uh, when you use the ES build bundler. Otherwise, uh, you can just leave it out. But why not make it fast? So I'll save that. And the next thing I want to do now that my uh, adapter is successfully installed is go ahead and edit my Svelte, uh, my Svelte configuration file, which is svelte.config.js. So what I want to do is first import the adapter that I just installed, so which is import adapter from, it should be at Svelte. Yep, that one. Thank you, Copilot. And the next thing I want to do is specify what adapter that Svelte should use for this project. So I'm going to set it to the adapter that I just, I just imported, which is this one. All right, so I'll save that. And what else do I need to do? I think that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So let me go ahead and create uh, the folder where I want to put the functions. So I'll do Netlify, then functions. That's it. And just to test this out, let me create a function and just call it like, I don't know, greeting. Yeah, greeting.js. And then just put like, the smallest function you've ever seen basically and uh, it should be this so it's just an async function that returns uh good morning that's it but you know what since we are doing uh es6 let's just go ahead and rewrite the function so that it's it's uh it uses the ecmascript features that netlify functions currently support so we can do uh instead of doing all that we can do export async function Yeah, thank you, that's it. Okay, well, look at that. It's safe to say that Copilot wrote this entire function for me. Uh, so let's say good morning. And that's it. Uh, so I think that's all. Now what should happen is, let me, let me uh, deploy this code and just test that this works. And do git add everything. And I think I created a repo for this here. So, yep, this one. So, I'm just going to get that. Sorry that this is so tiny. I'm going to try and zoom in a bit. Oh, now I zoomed in too much. All right, so I'll paste the origin and I can do git push now. And that should work. If I refresh, I should get that pushed in. Cool. So I'm going to go to my uh Netlify site
and I'm going to create a new site from Git. Select GitHub, get it authenticated, and I can put the repo that I'm searching for here. So select. The build commands are already pre-filled for me, so I'll go ahead and deploy site. All right, the site is deployed. So if I click on this, I should see the site, which is this one. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and then try and see if the Netlify functions I added actually work. So I'll do .netlify slash functions. And what did we call the function? We called it greeting, right? That's it. So this should now send back exactly good morning. Look at that. So that is exactly what we've specified here. So our Netlify function is working as expected in Svelte. Fantastic. But just something else I wanted to quickly show you, and that is that assuming I, I'll clear this out first. If I run this command, this, this application locally, the function wouldn't work out of the box. And I'll tell you why. All right, so if you look at this, you will see that the function uh, is the application is running as expected. But if I go to the same route to to the functions route, which is Netlify function slash greeting, this one, no, not that one, slash functions slash greeting. Yep, you see that it fails and all of this error is literally just trying to tell you that since uh, Svelte, since if you look at our package.json file, you see that we have a type module, which basically tells Svelte to treat every .js file in this application as an ES module. If you look at this folder, Netlify and the greeting.js file, you see that we are getting the function using the require key, which is not supported. So uh, a quick fix for this is to do a few things. The first one is come back to your netlify.tomo file and remove the node bundler that uses esbuild. And we save that. And then come back to the actual netlify function that you wrote and change this to use the, norm, the, the regular uh, function that's, that we had, the common JS function pattern that we had before. So instead of doing an export like this, we'll just go ahead and do, what did I do? Exports dot handler will be an async function. And I'm just going to do this. Right. So now that that is done, I can stop this server and run it again with Netlify dev. And hopefully our function should be working now. No, it's not. Okay. I'm going to try and find out what I did wrong. All right, so I think what I need to do is I need to also rename this function to common.js so it doesn't uh, it doesn't look at it as a JavaScript file because that's what the type module is doing. I will save this. And I think if I, if I even refresh, it should work. I don't have to run this server again. Can't find module. Creating dot, um, really? You don't need it. Okay. Okay. I think I have to restart the server now. There you go. See, so a couple of things you need to do to get, uh, to get Netlify Dev working locally in your Svelte application 
is basically remove if you're using the the node the node uh, es build bundler that we had here before basically just to remove it that's the first step then the second one is to change your function to use exports.handler as opposed to using the es uh the es6 uh, version we had before then finally you rename it to use the cjs extension as opposed to being a javascript file so that way you will get your function working as expected so that's it i wanted to just quickly show you how uh, to use netlify functions in your svertkit applications and if you're wondering why because i know that uh, svertkit also has api routes that will give you the same functionality that you just get with netlify functions i made a little thing uh here to explain why that might be important or it may not it may not be the same for everyone but like imagine that you're migrating your application to svertkit from like a different stack and you already have like netlify functions that are already working for you in that stack it would it would really just make sense to import them into your svertkit application as opposed to writing them all afresh as uh, as as svertkit api routes the second reason that you might be inspired to, to use Netlify functions in, in your Svetkit application is you can auto functions in more languages if you're writing Netlify functions, right? You can write in Go, in Rust, in TypeScript, or as opposed to just writing them in JavaScript, which is what Svetkit can only allow you to do. So if performance is important to you and you're trying to speed up uh, your function running times, you can build them in Rust, you can author them in Go, and those have always been known to be faster than JavaScript. Also, it gives you more configuration options like uh, using Netlify redirects and Netlify rewrites. Depending on how you're architecting your project, uh, these things can come in handy for you. So that's it. That's what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, thank you for listening in. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and I'll continue to provide helpful content. <music>